Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am super excited to finally be launching this and this is my Desi Does It digital budget template. So in this first tab, it's just my welcome page and it lets you know to hover over any cell in red as it's gonna have additional comments for me to walk you through the process. And then you can also click this below to bring you to this video that you're watching right now. This is just in case you forget where the video lives and it's just gonna be easier to bring you straight there. So let's get started. All right, so welcome to my template. I know it looks a little bit overwhelming, but I promise you it's not as scary as it looks. In this section, I enter in my income and repeat expenses, broken up into two since I'm paid bi-weekly. This gives me a high-level overview of what I have left over. Once my main expenses are covered, be sure to add any subscriptions and auto payments to this along with the date of when they're due and then update the date column each month as you pay this. So say for example, my paycheck is $1,900 and I expect within those two weeks to spend, you know what, we'll change this to 60 bucks. You'll see that what I have left over has already changed and the difference between that already changed as well. And I'll undo that and I'll do it again. So this number here is the total of everything that I know I'm going to spend. And this amount is the total of my income minus my expenses, what I have left. So say here, I decide not to do my eyebrows and I'm not gonna include that as a reoccurring expense. You can just simply remove that and you'll see, again, this will change and this amount will change. Now say instead of a manicure for my guys, you get a haircut and your haircut is 30 bucks, bam. But say a half of your rent is 600 bucks. Now you don't have as much left over as you did before. I think Netflix recently changed their subscription. I wanna say it's like 17 bucks. So you wanna make sure that you're adding even those small little things that you know always come out each month and then use this due date column to just keep track of yourself of when these bills are actually due. Even if you have them on auto pay, I find that it's still helpful to include those due dates there because sometimes if you realize that once you fill this out, oh wow, a lot of my expenses come out of one check, you can actually reach out to those companies and call them up and say, hey, I still want this on auto pay, but can you auto pay it on the 15th of the month instead? This section is exactly the same as the one at the top. Say instead of $70, I know that I spend $60 every two checks. I don't spend $120. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to 100. For here, I'm getting a mani pedi once a month and I'm gonna put that with this paycheck. My utilities, half of rent, we're gonna go ahead and change that again to 600 bucks. My phone bill, my savings, my car. So again, my income minus the total of all my payments equals this amount that I have left over. Now down here is where I like to track my credit score, my cash savings, my retirement and other investments. And if you hover over here, I update this each time I get paid so I can track how much my 401k is increasing by. All of these amounts are then used to calculate my net worth, which I'll here is where I like to keep track of all my credits. So my open lines of credits are all listed here. You can see they're listed by smallest to largest in the balance. And this number is also included in my net worth calculation. So I don't just include my minimum payment, but I have my balance as well as my limit to make sure that I'm not approaching that limit. And then here is my net worth. So this is a total of my savings plus retirement plus other investments minus the totals of all my existing debt. Now, don't get too discouraged when you're filling this out because I'm going to show you realistically where I stood. I had maybe $3,000 saved. I had, yeah, maybe seven grand in my retirement. Uh, I had no other investments because I was broke. I couldn't do that. My credit card balance was maybe a thousand. My loans were more like 6,000. Oops, oh, I need to add another zero in there. My other loan was like 9,000. My other loan was like 12,000. And this is where I was. I had a negative net worth of like 18 grand because all of my credits and my debts outweighed the amount of money that I had saved in my cash savings, retirement, and other investments. So don't let this scare you. This should actually motivate you to be like, man, I'm negative 18 grand in the hole. It's time to get started and really, you know, hone in and start paying these off. 
All right, so here's where the fun begins. This is how I budget for every paycheck. This cell is the current amount that is in my checking account. And as I pay for things, this number is going to decrease. And this allows me to see how much money I have left over once all my expenses are taken care of. If you decide to skip something like your manicure, you'll see that the number at the total will decrease. So right now, after all my expenses, my total is $306. If I go ahead and remove my manicure, you'll see my total is $350. So this allows me to play around and say, hmm, I actually don't really need to get my eyebrows done, and maybe that'll save me, give me $369 of spending money. Say I went ahead and I took care of these few items here, but I also updated this amount. Say I have $1,200. Now I have $319 total left over. You can definitely go in and add your spending money as well. So say I go in and put spending, I'm gonna give myself $200 of spending cash. That means I have $119 of wiggle room once all of these needs are taken care of. Now something like a birthday dinner, this doesn't belong on the left hand side because it's not a reoccurring expense, but I do want to account for it. I want to make sure that I know that it's there. So really try to think of every single thing that you're going to spend money on within those two weeks before your next paycheck hits. And then when the next paycheck comes, it's kind of like a budget reset. So you're going to follow that same principle for all your paychecks coming forward. So say this is my 115 paycheck, I get paid $1,900 but I have a bonus for $300. Don't forget to add any additional income, whether it's a bonus or some extra cash, because these two numbers are gonna be included in your total. So it's anything that you have coming in subtracted by anything that you have coming out. So say for example, it's January 25th, I have a few days until my next paycheck, and I currently have $700 in my bank account, but I already took care of all of these things. That's how I know that if I have $700 in my bank account and I still need to do these three things, that's how much wiggle room I have left over. So if I really wanted to, I can go ahead and add things in here again and say, all right, if I have $300 of wiggle room, I can go ahead and apply $200 more to my savings than I did before. And say that cycling class gets canceled, I go from $101 left over to $126 left over and say, you get to your next paycheck and you still have that $126 left over, do what you want with that. Put in your savings, pay off debt, whatever your goal is at the time, make sure that you do that. To the right hand side, I have some affirmations of wealth just because I personally open my budget every single day and I want something to read that's gonna give me a boost of positivity. And down here, I have a list of my financial goals. I try to make these short-term goals, not I wanna save $10,000 this year, but maybe something you can accomplish within the quarter. This allows you to feel a sense of satisfaction when you begin to knock things out. One thing that I did wanna add is that, say this paycheck is done and you don't even have to worry about it, you can literally just highlight the whole thing, delete it, and shift cells up. And there you go, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Your focus is strictly just this paycheck. Once you do that, you can go ahead and add your other paycheck and so on and so forth, just so that you have an idea of what's coming up in the future. And then finally on the third tab is my progress tab. The same way that when you're working out, you know, if you're not seeing the scale change and you're not seeing your body change, it's hard to feel like you're doing something good. So here's where I like to track my progress. Think of this almost as if when you're tracking, you know, your weight loss. It's a whole different experience when you can say I've lost 25 pounds since January versus you know it's November and you have no idea how your progress has done it doesn't really motivate you to continue to do it so it'll be super awesome if by July you know you can say man I had $35,000 in debt in January and now I only have 25,000 that shows you that you paid off $10,000 of debt within that time frame so this is something that I just add to every single month at the start of the month and eventually you'll be able to really look back on your net worth, your savings and your debt and really feel proud about how far you've come. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that this budget helps you out the same way that it's helped me.